All right, from the high level future looking to the on the ground boring stuff, I have a, a difficult act to follow, but I will do my best. Uh, also, I should note, I gave exactly the same talk last week at WolfCon. I did warn you, if you're still here anyway, I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, it's another year. And so it's time to talk about what we've done and where we're going next. And I hope to engage many of you in that process while we're here. So uh, first of all, uh, to get everything started, uh, some, some quick thanks. First of all, to the Open Library Foundation, which is the organization that hosts the Viewfind Project and provides support. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with them uh, for another year. Also to everyone who contributed to the planning of this conference, uh, I'm honored to have been invited here. I'm thrilled by how many people have arrived. Uh, I feel energized and excited, and uh, I'm also grateful I didn't have to do any planning this year. I would have happily helped, but I'm grateful I didn't have to. Uh, and also, of course, thank you to Viewfind's registered service providers, which are organizations that provide Viewfind-related services and contribute financial support to help keep the project running. Uh, here they all are. I know uh, some are in the room, but if you need support with your viewfind uh, from outside your organization, please consider uh, talking to some of these people. Uh, they're all wonderful and will help you with a variety of things. And you can learn more uh, at the viewfind.org website to see exactly which services are provided by each organization. So uh, moving on, uh, let's start by talking about what is new since last year. Uh, first of all, we have our traditional minor release, Viewfind 9.1 and a couple of uh, bug fix releases. Uh, this added some new search backends to the software, uh, specifically integration with EBSCO's publication finder uh, and with the database's A to Z lists and libguides, uh, bringing the ability to pull in data from more sources into your search results. Uh, it also added some interesting new ILS functionality, uh, improved support for representing user proxy relationships, um, the ability for uh, ILS drivers to return record specific URLs. For example, if you wanna be able to link to native functionality from inside of Viewfind, uh, the ability to purge transaction history uh, and a little more nuance in representation of item availability. We can now explicitly say we're not sure instead of just a binary, yes, it's available, no, it's not. Then we had our major release uh, of Viewfind 10.0, which is still the latest. There's a 10.0.1 coming soon, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, and this added, of course, more substantial things being a major release. Uh, one of the biggest being uh, the introduction of new beta themes based on the Bootstrap 5 framework. Uh, Viewfind has been on Bootstrap 3 for a very long time, and we've avoided migrating because we know it will inconvenience everyone. But Bootstrap 3 is past end of life. We need to get off of it. It's starting to look bad that we haven't. So Bootstrap 5 is coming. It's a, a beta in 10.0, and I'll talk more about the further developments of that as we proceed. Uh, we've also got uh, new, more dynamic search result rendering, uh, so you can navigate through search results without doing full page redraws, though you can also switch this off if for whatever reason you don't like it. Uh, we've added optional persistent login support so users can click remember me and stay logged in for a period of time if you enable it. Uh, we've added rate limiting, which is becoming increasingly important as uh, more evil robots attack our viewfinds every day. Uh, we've added an explain feature, uh, which will display information about how solar relevance calculations uh, take place. So if you have power users who are asking you, why is this the third result? You can actually let them see for themselves. Uh, we've added on-screen virtual keyboards. So it's possible to enter uh, data in languages that use character sets that aren't easily supported by the user's native keyboards. Uh, and we've added filtering of facet lists through user input. So if you have a very large number of facet values, users can enter substrings and narrow that down. 
Uh, and we've got multi-page selection in favorites lists. So now if you're doing a bulk operation, you don't have to apply it a page at a time. You can navigate through your whole list of favorites, checking things as you go, and then perform an operation on all of those at the end. And we have some new recommendation modules. Uh, we have consortial viewfind, which was designed with uh, the reshare system in mind, but could have other applications. The idea of this being uh, it can connect to the API of an external viewfind instance and provide results from there as recommendations to complement your own local searches, uh, as well as a databases recommendation module which can look at some of the facet data within the search results and recommend relevant databases based on that. Um, I've got lots of things to tell you about. This just keeps going. But I, I do want to pause and say that most of the features I just listed were developed by people in this room. And so thank you all for your contributions. And it is very exciting that this is happening. Uh, it's been thrilling to spend more of my time reviewing and merging pull requests than writing code. Uh, that's the value of, of a community like this. But anyway, I'll go on boring you with bullets about detailed features. Uh, we have a new ILS driver called Composed, uh, which can be used to actually compose together multiple functions from different ILS drivers, which may be useful in situations where you have an ILS driver, but you want to override a couple of features using some other system, this allows you to just write a new class that does just the new parts and sort of blend it together. Um, we've added support for uh, network error logging headers through the content security policy.ini file. So if you want to get reports back about issues that are happening in your end users browsers, you can take advantage of this to gather some intelligence. Uh, we've added support for displaying bound width titles, uh, currently only supported by Folio, but other drivers have, have the ability to integrate with this if uh, integration is necessary. Uh, we've added support for displaying citation relationships uh, in the Primo module, if you use that. Uh, we've added support for a tool um, called Easy Proxy URL Checker, which if you use the Easy Proxy proxy server, can analyze your proxy configuration to intelligently prefix links so that only the links that need your proxy get your proxy prefix. And we've added the ability to deeply search within nested hierarchical collections, uh, which is useful, uh, for example, in Villanova's digital library, which has a deeply hierarchical uh, structure. Though it does require a bit of extra indexing to take advantage of that. And we have a new table of contents API integration from this uh, check service that I will not mispronounce for you. It keeps going. Uh, we've added more configurability. Uh, so for example, you can now configure the user account side menu through a YAML file if you want to turn things off or rearrange things or add things without having to mess with template files. And even better, there is a record data formatter.ini. And if in the past you've customized record displays, you've learned that it's kind of annoying because the historical way of doing this involved extending multiple classes and building complicated arrays. And you can still do that, but you can also just do it through an any file now if you want to add a field, remove a field, move some things around. Uh, we've also continued to improve internationalization. We've added support for the ICU message formatter syntax in our language strings, uh, which can be useful for dealing with uh, plural forms across multiple languages. Uh, and we've added uh, a new translation, uh, Maori, contributed by uh, New Zealand contributors. And if you thought this was exciting and you wanted a 45 minute version of me talking about every single thing that's changed in Viewfind 10, you can go to the video page in the wiki and watch the really detailed version where I talk about every possible backward compatibility break and every tiny little minor detail. Or you can not watch that if you don't want that. So in addition to the software itself growing, uh, the community has remained active and there has been growth there as well. Um, for one thing, we've managed to uh, get localized set up as our translation platform for the project's internationalization. 
So this replaces a long running manual process involving emailing any files back and forth, which I will be honest is still going on because I'm happy to accommodate whatever method uh, is best for our translation volunteers. They're already doing a lot of work and I wanna make that easier for them. Uh, but there's now a simple web-based way to do translation, uh, which more and more people are using. Uh, additionally, the Project Management Committee has uh, published a formal documentation review process talking about how on an annual basis, we ensure that you find documentation remains accurate and relevant. Uh, and we've also uh, opened up a web page about our approach to accessibility uh, because that has always, I think, been an important priority for Viewfind, but maybe hasn't been clearly articulated. So now we have formal statements about it and we're working on uh, further development uh, to formalize our uh, commitment to accessibility. So having talked about what's new, there's also what's next. And the very next thing is Viewfind 10.1, which now has a release date of November 4th. Uh, and one of the main things, both driving that release date and uh, making this release worthwhile is support for the new WorldCat version 2 API, uh, because OCLC has announced that their version 1 API will be shut off at the end of the year. And so those of us who use WorldCat's API to augment our results need to do something quickly. So uh, we're hoping to have this release out with the new API integration in November. So there's at least a couple months to get uh, upgraded and switched over for those who rely on that service. Additionally, I already mentioned Viewfind 10.0 introduced Bootstrap 5-based themes as betas, but in 10.1, we are going to quickly escalate those from beta to default, and we're going to deprecate all the Bootstrap 3-based themes, because it is unfortunately a lot of work to maintain multiple themes in parallel, so we need to make this transition. And the purpose of the Viewfind 10 series of releases is to give you the time and the tools to migrate your local themes along with us. So please uh, do spend some time looking at this. Uh, it's fortunately not as painful a process as it might be because uh, there are back compatibility tools sort of built in. So we've tried to keep this as, uh, as simple as possible, but it does still require some work and testing. So allow yourselves some time for that. And we'll hope that Bootstrap 6 is not released five minutes after we launch our theme, but we know it will be. That's just how this works. Uh, other uh, smaller features coming up, uh, the ability to make uh, HTML elements on the page sticky so that they don't scroll out of view can now be configured through the theme configuration based on CSS selectors. Uh, we've added some new ways of uh, controlling permissions uh, both using cookies and using values in the session. I should note that the cookie-based method is definitely not secure. In fact, we named the class insecure cookie, so there would be no confusion about that. Uh, but there still be, may be some situations where it would be useful to set cookies and then have you find act differently based on their presence or absence. So that is now possible. And the session-based method should be able to be used in secure ways if you have complex logic you want to apply to grants uh, specific permissions. And of course, also, there's always ongoing accessibility work. Uh, more of that will be incorporated into this new release, along with our fixes and enhancements and, you know, the constant flow of contributions that we are seeing now. And then uh, after 10.0 next year, we will be reaching uh, major release 11. And from my point of view, uh, the things that are most in view have to do with upgrading and modernizing because my most important goal is keeping the project viable and running and being on top of dependencies is a big part of that, even though it's not necessarily glamorous or exciting. Uh, so, you know, as we have been doing on an ongoing basis, we'll raise the PHP requirement to 8.2, reflecting the end of life of 8.1, which is coming very soon. Uh, we will completely remove the Bootstrap 3-based themes that we deprecated in 10.1, uh, and we'll spend a significant amount of time getting rid of outdated Laminas components because uh, 
Laminas has come a long way from the monolithic view of Zen framework where we started. There were a lot of redundant parts in there that have now been superseded by other things. And Laminas is finally cleaning house and just getting rid of uh, several of these things. So uh, most urgently, the crypt and mail components have been uh, marked abandoned. So if you do a composer install in Viewfind today, it's going to say, please don't use these anymore. And I don't like people seeing those scary messages. So we need to do something about that. Uh, so I believe that we will be completely removing our dependency on Laminas Crypt because native PHP functionality now largely does what we were using that for anyway. And we'll move from Laminas Mail to Symphony Mailer, which hopefully won't be a huge project. Then larger pieces, uh, I've been talking for years about getting away from Laminas DB. That is a really big job, but the end is truly in sight. Um, as I've said before, the goal is to move to Doctrine, which is really a widely used PHP database abstraction layer. Um, and in 10.0, we actually did most of the hard work for that. Uh, we made the decision to uh, split the migration into two parts. First, refactor all of the code so that all of the uh, framework-specific database logic is isolated into just one space, what we call the database services classes. And then all of the other code relies on uh, well-documented interfaces. So now all of Alaminas DB code as of release 10 is isolated in one spot. So all we have to do for 11 is translate Laminas to Doctrine and the overall shape of the code won't change much. So if you get through the 10.0 uh, upgrade, and I know several, including Villanova, have been pretty successful at doing that, um, hopefully 11 will actually be even less disruptive than that. And all that being said, if you do find any of it disruptive or have questions about it, you can always reach out to me. I want to be helpful. And then the last of these four things in my uh, my bullet point here is the Laminas HTTP library, which I feel less urgency to replace, uh, but it is something that is quite dated and doesn't comply with certain standards that are becoming more widespread. So I see that going out, perhaps gradually, uh, and I think we'll we'll push that along in 11, but it will depend on available time. The other three are more, more pressing. Uh, also, we still need to modernize our interactions with solar in some ways. Another thing we've been talking about for many years is getting rid of the old facet API. Maybe we'll get to it this time. But you know, when things work, it's it's sort of hard to abandon them. Uh, and beyond that, as I say, I wanted to go over the boring dependency stuff because that's what's often on my mind. But we also need to think of exciting new features and Part of the goal of this conference is to determine what those are as a community. Uh, and so I hope you'll all join for the road mapping session at the end of the conference tomorrow, where I think we'll be able to talk about some of the bigger picture things, including some of the themes from our keynote about machine learning and artificial intelligence and linked data, uh, and figure out where that fits into the picture. Uh, other things coming up, of course, are ongoing community development. Uh, some next steps in mind are, of course, the ongoing process of raising funds. Uh, we have been quite successful. I think we have a healthy amount of funding for the project to continue what we are doing today. But if we wanted to do more ambitious things like have project-specific staff, we still have a long way to go. Uh, so I think it's worth continuing to move in that direction to ensure the, the sustainability of the project. Uh, also, documentation like software is never done. We need to continue to make improvements there. I think what we've done this year coming up with our review process and actually applying it has been helpful, but there's still more to do. There will always be more to do. Um, investigate implications of generative AI, not only in the software, but also in the tooling and services surrounding the software. Uh, that's something that some members of the project management committee have been spending some time uh, thinking about. And also, we need to decide, one of our next steps is to decide what our next steps are. Um, a few years ago, we spent a lot of time with community organization, which led to the creation of the project management committee. 
uh, and a lot of formalization of what had previously been informal uh, processes. And I think we've we've made great strides. Things are running along well, but I think it's beginning to feel a little bit like we're finding business as usual. And that's probably mostly a good sign, but I think it's also an opportunity to reflect and see if there's anything new or different that we should be doing. Uh, so there may be some opportunities, again, as a community to do some brainstorming and prioritization to think of what direction to take next. Uh, so watch the community calls and feel free to send ideas my way. Um, we, we may do some exercises or other planning things uh, to set our course. Uh, and then that gets us to, again, the road mapping, which I hope will be an exciting cap to this whole event. So just some things to think about while you're here between now and then. Um, as I say, the community is a big part of things. So if there's something you'd like to see the community do or give to you, uh, please keep that in mind. Are there any features that your institutions need that they don't already have? Is there any local code you've developed uh, that you might want to share back to the project? And I, I, when I say this, I also say, I don't care if it's ugly. I don't care if you don't think it's good. If it does something useful, I always encourage contributions. Uh, it's good to see what's possible. And we can, as a community, through code review and discussion, shape it into something that will probably be better for everybody. Um, and if you've ever submitted a pull request, you know I, I do leave very detailed reviews, but I uh, appreciate the fact that everyone seems to find that helpful and not just annoying. Um, also think about new documentation needs, whether there are any tutorials that are lacking. We devoted a lot of time a few years ago to creating a series of video tutorials to sort of guide through the whole process of using Viewfind. I think they are all still pretty relevant and useful but it's been a few years, so I imagine there are at least a handful of outdated comments in there or things that could be improved. Uh, I'm not eager to re-record things because it's time consuming and difficult, but if it's time, I can be persuaded or maybe some of you would like to help. Um, and that brings me to think about how you can help. Um, I am always happy to devote as much of my time as I can to the project, but I am only me. And I'm always grateful for all the help that I can get. And as I say, that level of help and support I've been receiving from the community and have seen through the project management committee has just been increasing. And I'm incredibly grateful. Um, but, you know, join in. It's fun. We help each other. We get to talk about code and craziness. And that is the state of the project. Uh, I imagine there's some time for uh, questions and discussion.